Hello, my name is Apostle Lisa Davis at Tree of Life International Harvest Church here in the greater Winston-Salem, North Carolina. I come to you because I do have a word um, of hope, um, but also a, a, a warning. Um, the Lord has been dealing with me in dreams and visions, and as a prophet, um, uh, I want to obey God. Amen. So, please allow me to obey God and tell you not only the hope, but the warning. And um, I hope and I know not only will the warning bless you, but the hope will also be a greater blessing. Um, as you know, we had entered, um, we, we've been in this um, stage of rebuilding our economy. Um, in 2008, we know the market began to fall. Things happened. Even my husband lost his job on 2008, on the eighth month, on the eighth day. Believe it or not, 888. We know that's the sign of new beginnings. Um, and so that hit our uh, home because <clears throat> he's the only breadwinner and we had the church going and um, so a lot of people was losing their home, losing jobs. However, um, as a ministry, as a family, we came together and helped one to another. Amen. So um, what has happened and what is happening um, and what God has been showing me um, is so much is going on. I'm going to try to get it all out. Um, I hope you continue to um, listen to this um, this um, video. Try not to make it long, um, but I have to get it out. I have to get it out. So if you can't do it and look at it, don't have time to look at it now, uh, please just look it up on YouTube. Come back later, um, and and you can uh, get the message, the rest of the message on YouTube. Um, so hi, Elva. <clears throat> Um, what is this? This is um, the fourth month, which is April um, the 2nd, um, 2005. Um, well, the Lord been dealing with me for the last um, two weeks um, in dreams and visions um, going out of my body. You know, God just been um, taking me on a journey. Um, but He spoke really heavily. And um, um, with so much that if you have not been alert, what's going on, um, not only just in the, in the economy, the market, the money, um, if that's all you're interested in and that's all you've been focusing on, then you might want to check your heart on that one. <laughs> However, there's more behind than just the money because it's a lot of things that's going on behind the scene and money is the distraction to keep you um, so caught up and worried about the future, your future, that you can't even, sometimes we get so off focus that we're not seeing what's going on behind the scenes. We're, we're not tuned in. We're not sensitive or discerning on what's going on behind the scenes of the money. Okay? Um, if we want to talk about our government, and things that are going on, um, as we call them, the think, uh, the think tanker, think tank thinkers who makes the plans and the rules, and we know who they are, um, Illuminati, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They are the government. Okay, um, if you didn't know that, do your homework. However, um, so it's a lot of things that's going on behind the scene that we're not aware of, or 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 not paying attention okay we are they're, they're bringing a lot of other stuff into our face to 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 distract us for what's going on behind the scene okay but God will have it that he said he would not have us ignorant he would not have us lost he said he would warn us and he would protect us 
Um, that's why he have the prophets on the scene. For those of you who don't believe that prophets are today and the apostles are not today. I'm sorry, but we're here. And God got us here to warn, to bring hope, encouraging, and to bring focus. Amen. And to and, and just to, like I say, bring some hope. And, and I want to bring the hope with the warnings and what's going on. Um, in 2000, and it, you know, if you look before 2008, you know, 2007, everybody was kind of flourishing. Homes were being bought. People was buying cars. The market money was great. I mean, ha. Huh? You know, so people was purchasing homes and, and you know what happened after that when they got their homes, um, uh, a lot of them went under foreclosure and so because they were tricked, uh, <laughs> um, because the glory of having these things, we were not looking behind the scene for the future. Understand where I'm going? Because we were focused on the prize, which is great. Glory to God. He got, allow us for us who are people of God, um, who trusted God to buy homes, only for it for the enemy to um, come and do his part, okay, and um, allow things to happen the way God said it was happening. You got to remember, God uses Satan for his purpose. Amen. Satan ain't being used for his purpose. Satan is being used for God's purpose. Amen. Because God knows what's good for you. And if God's good is better than my best, I'd rather have God's good. Because my best could just tear me apart. So, if God's good is good enough for me, then I accept his good. So, let me get to it. Um, so, everyone was flourishing. Everyone was doing great. Marriages were flourishing. Yet, some were <laughs> finding their way. But in 2008 hit, the economy hit us really hard. And um, so a lot of us lost cars, homes, houses, clothes, you name it. Loved ones to suicide just because of money. Um, people started doing crazy things. The crime rate even got higher. Um, things just got out of just out of hand because of fear because of fear and one thing God tells us the love of money is the root of evil and we know this but we forget that and we're so focused on mine and mine and getting and getting and becoming successful and this and that that we don't even know what's going on behind the scene behind all the uh, the great stuff. There's some stuff that's about to blow over like a tornado coming and take us out. And that's what happened. And so, as I was, uh, God was uh, sharing some things with me. He's telling me there's some hope. And with this hope, here comes the warning. Uh, because in the midst of everything that's going on, um, the Bible speaks and tells us that these things shall come to pass. For these are the signs of when God, when, who Jesus, our, our, our brother, our Lord is coming. Amen. These are the signs of the birth pains of Jesus coming to, to gather his, his church. Okay. Are you his church? Are you his child? Or are you just are you are you just you know an associate you know associate you know you just kind of hang out when you need him or when you are just to be around him or are you really that great friend are you really a friend that you really talk to God on an everyday basis you know you hang out you know he cool right so God is coming for that kind of people he's coming for us you all and and he wants us. To not worry and be weary and well doing and waiting on him. Because yes, trials and tribulation are coming. I've been through a lot. It's a lot of things that's been going on. Even this in the atmosphere of sickness, in the weather pattern. These things are going on and you are not paying attention because we're so busy about 
the economic and what the politicians are saying about the economic and the gas rise and the gas shortage and the gas this and the wars and the rumors of wars and all the Ebola's, all the pestilence. These things shall come to pass. And I was thinking and I was reading in um, Genesis um, 41 when um, Pharaoh had a dream and he couldn't interpret the dream and so he had no other person to interpret the dream which was who Joseph who was in the who was in the dong a, a, a man at the dong and when you in the dong nobody is seeking you out for nothing right now because you dong you ain't nothing you you have nothing to say nothing to offer nothing to give you're just dong you're just a slave to whatever they want to do to you amen However, it's so funny you all who feel like you have been abandoned by your families and friends like Joseph was because mm -hmm, he was just dumb. He was, you know, that's because people were jealous of him. His brothers and them were jealous of him. So could it be that could be what's wrong with us who have been kind of rejected? I don't know. Take that for yourself. But all I know, Joseph was in the dong pit, okay? And so because he had no one to interpret this dream that Pharaoh had, they went and got Joseph. So guess what? Prophets, we in the dong. Some of us, we didn't have a voice. We had nothing to say. We was talking crazy when we did. But now God has said, it's time to bring them out of the dong, out of the pit. Here I am out of the pit and I come with a hope behind the warning. Okay? So, in Genesis, we know that Pharaoh, Genesis 41, Pharaoh had a dream. He began to interpret it. So, Joseph came. He brought Joseph. Told Joseph the dream. Joseph prayed on it, thought about it, came back and told him, I know the interpretation of the dream. Now, this is where we was, where we were, and where we are going, okay? Because then I'm going to take you to Joel. Oh, it's going to bless you when you get to Joel. And he speak of this day. Joel, this is the day we're living in right now in Joel. And I'm going to show it and prove it to you. <laughs> And then I'm going to tell you the warning. So please bear with me. Do not move. If you got to move, you better come back and hear the rest of this because it's going to bless you. And it's going to help you understand where you are in the season of Joel. Amen. So, Pharaoh was told by Joseph. And you know, they were doing well, like, you know, American people, we were doing well, you know, living large, doing good, going on cruises, doing our thing, right? Some of us. <laughs> Amen. Some of us get growing businesses, was growing rapidly. It wasn't nothing hard to get a job. Huh? Now you get a job is, even if you get one, it's still low pay some, some, sometimes. But even back then, that low pay was right on time because, you know, they try to make it equal with the economy, but with the market of housing and things of that nature, food and car, things and clothes, it just never could really reach it. But we had them. Amen. Because the favor of the Lord followed us. The grace and the mercy of God is upon us. We are in that dispensation of mercy and grace. Hallelujah. So here is Joseph. He comes and he tells Pharaoh, Oh, you're living well now. But here comes a famine. And it's going to hit you hard for seven years. Seven years. Okay? Seven years. He tells him. He says, He says, um, Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout the land of Egypt. And in seven, and in the uh, seven years, 
plenty years the earth brought forth by handful and gather up all the food of the seven years which were in the land of Egypt and the land of the food of the cities the food of the field which was round about the, every city laid he up in the same Joseph gathered the corn as the sand in the sea and every much more that was left so what was happening they were prospering at that time and Joseph told them you're prospering now but there's a famine coming so while you're prospering, let's um let's 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 store up some stuff. Let's let you know. And I remember last. I mean, I remember before 2008, I had angels. I had people to walk up on me and say, "Please warn the people that a that they must store up water, food, canned foods. Please warn my people." So in my church, I was warning, "Please." Start stirring up food, put up water, uh, do what you can, uh, soap dishes, do whatever you can. Watch your income, watch your spending, because something is about to happen. First of all, soup, school, uh, food supplies, food supplies is going to go up, and food supply is going to uh, diminish. And the reason why, that's why the prices go up, because we came on this, this famine is about to hit. Food supplies are about to be... Um, destroyed okay and I remember that but and, and so I, I just started saying what was I mean I had people I would be in I was in um I think me and my husband was at Bojangles and this lady walked up to me and she told me who I was didn't know her she I, I didn't know her she didn't know me she, she, but she did but she was an angel and she said please one one my people one the people one my people to, to store up food, to store up water, water, food. Don't do so much spending. Save. Because there's a time coming that lack is going to hit. Okay. This was before 2008. And here Pharaoh is telling him, while things are right now good, while you can get a little bit of something, something. <laughs> Stir up a little bit of something, something, okay? And that's what Pharaoh is, uh, Joseph is telling Pharaoh. Because when the famine come, it's coming. And we know famine had hit some of the countries. And they depend on us. And we seem to be the one giving it to them too. And we're suffering. <laughs> now, that was interesting. Because we had, like Pharaoh, they were doing well. Then the, the sign came of the famine. So it was up to us to start storing up. And I think we all have been hearing, I mean, we've been hearing uh, Cleflo and Hagen and Kenneth Copeland and, and all these ones telling us to store up. Don't, 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 don't spend so carelessly. You know, store it up in heaven. Give to the food banks. Give because it's going to be needed. I'm serious. And it was needed probably for some of you who went. I know I went to the food bank in the, uh, the 2008s. 10, 11, 12. <laughs> okay. Because we were so busy giving out ourselves. Till we couldn't store up. So... He said, store up now. So this is what Joseph was telling Pharaoh. So Pharaoh gave Joseph the job. So things were coming. So he began to store up. We didn't do that, some of us. Some did. Some invested in stocks. Some people invested in, in things. And some people stored up they, you know, shares. And they did some things that could help them along the way. Some of us didn't have enough to say, but we could have saved even if it was $20 a week. But we didn't. Because we just had to get our hair did, young ladies. <laughs> our nails did, ladies. And I know Psalms 31 tells us that a woman, I ain't saying a wife, but a woman, has wisdom over her home. Amen. She knows when to plant, when to sow, and when to hold back. 
Yeah, she was a businesswoman in her house. So we have to become women of Psalms 31, a virtuous woman. This is woman over our household. But we wasn't. We was doing everything. Now, we looked it good, though, going to church, showing off, causing hell. Now, the famine came. And when the famine came, it lasted for the seven years. It lasted. And because they had the warning before the destruction, they obeyed God and they were good. Even other lands came to buy. So they even became even more. And I don't even know if the, how they land came to buy if they were suffering, but they did. God allowed them to have the money to come and purchase food from Pharaoh. Isn't that something? And all kind of stuff hit during that time. When the famine comes, there's a drought, there's fire, there's pestilence that come and eat, there's uh, diseases and stuff that come and defile the land, and all kind of stuff happens to, to take away crops. Think about corpse dying, people dying, and, they, and, 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 their, and their bodies become poisoned to the ground at times, you know, the toxins. So imagine all the things almost if they're like Moses with all the scientific stuff they did. If you watch the movie Reaping, you'll understand the scientist, uh, the scientist's view on the Moses, <laughs> on the Moses um, reenactments, okay? Um, <laughs> yeah, get the movie The Reaping. Awesome movie. But yet a believing movie. So what happened to us? We were doing well. We were getting warned. Some did, some didn't. And the ones that did survived. And the ones that didn't, we went through. We didn't understand until we some of us got sick. Some of us died. Some of my brothers and sisters are not here because of the stress of the finance. Because we didn't see the warning. We didn't, we were so busy in the shade of everything that we didn't see the shadow. We were so in the sunlight, we didn't see the shadow that was coming to take the sunlight. So, but I got some good news. I got some hope. But with this hope, there is a warning because again, God is good. We're coming up on Job and I'm going to read it and it's Job the second chapter and it's telling me this, blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify and fast, call a Solomon assembly. I'm calling a Solomon assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, and those that suck from the breast. Let the bridegroom go forth out of his chamber, and the bride out of her closet. Here we go. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar, and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give us not thy inheritance to the reproach that the heathen should rule over them. Amen. God don't want us being ruled over. He don't mind us being governed. You know, you know, governed. Giving us law so that we will be safe. But he don't want us to be enslaved. Alright? So behind all this money, enslavement is coming. Listen, and I'm going to tell you the whole story. What God is showing me. Wherefore should I say among thy people, where is their God? Then will the Lord be jealous for the land and pity his people. <laughs> yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith. And I will no more make you reproach among the heathens. Because see, we people of God, we weren't supposed to be suffering. Where's your God? Haven't you noticed? Even you've been 
asking God, where are you? God, you abandoned me. You abandoned me. I know. We even said, we even came a heathen unto ourselves because of everything that was going on from the 2008 up to this point where we are today. <laughs> he says, but I will remove far off from you a northern war. And look at all the wars. And he would drive him into a land barren and desolate. What happened with Hussein? Uh, Hussein? He, they, he, he came over here, but he went back over here. <laughs> 2011. Come on now. Mm -mm -mm. 9-11. He went back over there. So, here it is. He says, get back to my thing. <laughs> Get back to my place. Oh, praise God. My, 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 my thing move here. Not that far down. How to get down there, I don't know. Oh, sorry, y'all. Oh, it moved. That's why. It, it went to, it jumped uh, to uh, two. I don't want you to jump to two. I want you to stay at one. Come on, go back to one. Two, I mean. Go back to one. Go back to one. Too. Keeps jumping on me. Okay. Mm. Gotta get back to it. Lord have mercy. Well, I ain't going to say the enemy. Trying to get that. Here we go. And, uh... Here we go, the heathens. Okay, so I'm at verse, I'm at Joel 2, and I'm at verse 20 now. But I will remove far off from you the northern army and to drive him into the land barren, desolate, with his face towards the east sea, and his hindering parts, his hindered part towards the uttermost sea, and his tank shall come up, and his ill savior shall come up, because he had done great things. Fear not, though. O man, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid of the beasts of the fields, for the pastors of the wilderness do spring, for the tree beareth her fruit. The fig tree and the vine do year their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, are you his children? And rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately. And he will cause to come down for you the rain of the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten the cake of worm and the caterpillars and the plant of worm may, uh, my great armies which I have sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that have dealt wonderfully with you and my people shall never be ashamed. Because see the heathen was making us feel like even we felt ashamed because we would sit up here and where is our God some of us. That's, you know we were going through when 2008 hit I mean we were doing good before then right. <laughs> 
for 2008 here, everything here, okay? Because the job markets dropped, people was unemployed, my husband was getting unemployment, people were fighting for their unemployment, people was trying to get disability, people were trying to get compensation for 401. We had to go into our 401k. Oh, it was such a, it was a mess. However, God kept the formal because of those things that we laid up in the in the kingdom and in the earth. God allowed those formal rain to fall to fall. The formal rain it was falling moderately on us to sustain us. Amen. So thank God for that. But we still had to go through. Amen. And we did. We saw all kind of things take place when uh when when um when the phantom in here, we talk, he, they was talking about the pestilence and all the things that came during that time. We had the Ebola. We had these viruses and all these sicknesses started to come. People was having problems with headaches and all kinds of crazy stuff happening. So, but, but, but that was part of the famine. That was part of the famine. Uh, uh, rain, tsunamis, and things were coming, and our crops were being eating. So our food going up. So guess what they got to do? Behind the scene, what's going on behind all this is that they're they're making hybrid foods. We're eating hybrid foods um, that are made that are made. Um, they're put together, <laughs> you know, that God said, let us make, um, let everything produce after its own kind. But however, instead of us producing after our own kind, they're putting things together and producing them. And um, so some things are hybrid food we've been eating um, because food, they, we just couldn't really, our, the ground was just terrible. Okay. So, however, uh, we have to be careful even what we eat. So, please see God on how you're eating. If you find yourself getting fatter than you normally would be or thinner than you need to really see what's going on. Detox yourself. Do what you got to do. Because these are the things that's been going on. We had to eat what we can at that time. But what's happening is... Um, because the good foods that we were getting, okay, they were running out. So now they're making these hybrid foods, um, putting stuff together to make these foods that we can eat. And that's why they're so high because they scientifically using science stuff, okay? And it takes money for that. So then it says, and ye shall know that I am the, in the midst of Israel. And look what's going on with Israel. They're trying to take the land. I mean, if you think about the land that they're going through and they're trying to get that land <laughs> because it's good, yeah, it's, it's fruitful. And then, you know, and the reason why we're supposed to be protecting that, you know, because when we were protecting that and we do good to Israel and pray for Israel, what happened? He said, then your land shall too be prosperous, right? Because we take care of Israel. But however, things going on behind the scenes in our government, American government. However, whew, so even Israel, and that, and, and so let me keep going, and that I am the Lord your God and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall have, see visions, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit, and I will show you wonders in heaven and in earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and the terrible day of the Lord's to come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered from in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be delivered as the Lord have said and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Now, you can go and read Joel second chapter and get the whole story go read Genesis 41 chapter and get the whole story because I can't just give it all but let me tell you what's going on we're in the Joel we had lived out Joseph okay we lived in the plenty enough and then we came upon a famine that we should have stored up during that time and some of us did some of us had a 401k just in that retirement you know, investments, and some of us did. 
Crime went up, things happened because of fear. People killing their families because they had money and they ain't got no money. The lotto and there, all these jackpots are popping up because you, you, we want money. We, we need money quick. So we either robbing you or killing you or we go to the jackpot and spend the little money you got trying to win some money that by chance, you know, just, you know, we, we're depending on everything else but God. Amen. And then we say that we're depending on God when we're doing these things and God will allow it. No, God does not allow it. But God wants us to really trust him and not be ashamed and still lift up his name and shout out he's still our Lord. And what's happening, what the Lord's been showing me is that if you look at 2008 and we count up seven, seven years, we count up 2008, 2009, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, seven years. We're on the break of now rolling into the plenty. We're now beginning to roll into the harvest. The blood moons, as you see, that God said that was coming. These were the signs to come of his end times. These blood moons that has been coming has been activating everything that God has been saying that's going to come forth for his people and for himself. I remember telling Apostle Wayne Clapp when I was in Medina, Ohio three years ago that something's great about to happen to the moon and it's going to be a great awakening. Um, things are going to start to take place. People are going to have some strange things happen to their bodies, their minds, going to be tripping and everything. But at the same time, these blood moons are the great signs in heaven. They are representing who God said he is. Amen. So rather scientifically, they want to say it's science. But since God is of science and he, he, he formed science, we'll let them have it. But what's happening is 2015, seven years we've been going through, y'all. Seven years. And now we're seeing... Things they saying the economy is getting better. Job market is getting better. I mean, did y'all just not know that McDonald's <laughs> Corporation just started giving their people a raise? When you go apply for a McDonald's Corporation, you're getting nine dollars an hour now. <laughs> y'all, seriously, you're not seeing this? It was on the news today. Go look at your news today. And look up McDonald's <laughs> Corporation. It's got to be under the corporation, though. Because we got some people that owns McDonald's, but they're not under the corporation. They own it. Um, they sold them. They sold out and became their own business, okay? But some are actually under the corporation's business, okay? And they're going to $9 an hour. I'm going to I'm gonna give me a job. <laughs> That's how good the economy is getting. That now, jobs that wouldn't pay like that. I work for a company, and it's paying me pretty good, and I ain't supposed to be getting that. A cleaning company. Okay, I clean. I serve. I, I, I'm the servant. I'm doing the best job to make sure, and, 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 and you know. And, and getting paid pretty well. What's going on? I'm seeing people creating jobs now. I see people doing all kinds of things because the economy is getting better. Even Susan, if you watch Susan, the great financial consultant, oh, she's awesome. She'll tell you. You open up a bank account, you better go into the market, open up a marketing account because your APR, your, your interest rate is better. So, what am I saying? We are on the peak of our seven year of entering into plenty. Because even after they went through the pestilence, they had much, they started up, they went through the famine, and then what happened? They, 
the harvest came because Joseph was in place. So we need to gather the people and let them know the harvest is we on the peak of the harvest. We on we are right here in Joel 2 right now. We're right here. I just read it to you. Go read it again. And you will see where he's pouring out his spirit upon our flesh. And he's also the heavens. There's fires and earthquakes. Everything's going on. The moon. There has been so many eclipses. The sun turning dark. Now we got these, blue, these blood moons. Come on, y'all. We are where God said we will be. He said, ye shall eat in plenty. In verse 26 of Joel, I'm telling you, we're about to be restored to you the years, the seven years that the Lucas have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillars and the palmer worm and my great armies which sit among you. Ye shall eat in plenty. Who the army? The army is people. I mean, people houses got taken. People cars got repoed. Out there. <laughs> then we got two cars living in a nice apartment. Everything in the apartments paid for. I'm telling you. And my husband was just offered another job with more money. Okay, I'm thinking we are on it. So the Lord has been showing me dreams. Angels been taking me and showing me where we are just plenty. I'm just in plenty. And it's here. We are on the breaking edge of the seven year of the peace where God said, you know, that there were time and, and I think it was it's in Deuteronomy where there's a seven year where everything has to be restored. So if you had land, um, it has to be restored. Um, you know, your credit restored. Seven years. So these are the things I'm going to break for. They're going to restore your credit. Trust me with that. What I'm telling you, so that you can buy anything you want, get what you want, go to the bank. The bank's market is going to be awesome, just like Susan saying. The market is going up. That banks are now lending money, and then the only way it's going to happen is that the government's got to make sure you get it. So what they can go out into the economy and make it more. And this is the reason why. So the hope is this. You're on your breakthrough of finance. You're on your breakthrough to do the vision and dream that God has given you to do with that finance. Amen. Do it. Whatever you promised God you would do when you get the money, do it. It will bless you. It will bless the people. And we should not be ashamed. And we shall not shame our Lord by not doing it. Amen. We're on that time of the seven year. We, we're on that peak right there. That plenty is coming. The economy is getting better. You're, you're going to find out that the, 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 the banks will give you loans. And your, your, some of your credit things, things are going to happen. Uh, I even share this and I'm going to say it because it's going to happen and I ain't afraid to say it because I know it's going to happen because I know what I know that I know that the Lord said it because God owns the government. <laughs> he owns the federal. Uh, I don't if you don't understand about the federal and taxes and stuff, but they're going to actually give us a tax break. We're going to have a tax break for a whole year. But what's going to happen is you're going to still be able to get taxes at the end of the year. How? <laughs> because your social security number is, is a bank account that you don't know you got, but they got. And they're going to go into your bank account and give you the profits or the money that is owed to you from that bank account that your social security is behind those box. If you don't understand that, you better start doing your research. 
because we're not really supposed to be you know, really you know but they're going to release this and the reason why they're doing that because they want to give you money they want you to have power over your money they want you to think that you got power over your money they want you to feel empowered to go buy things and enjoy life that's what this is all about is they want you to enjoy life they want you to enjoy yourself build it up build up your kingdom that's what they want you to do that's the enemy is to make you think that everything you're getting right now okay is for you but it's not please use it for the kingdom what's about to happen is when that happens and you're enjoying it. What's happening behind the scene? Here's the warning. The hope is it's coming. So you don't have to sit there and cry no more. That it ain't going to happen for you. And your dream and vision ain't going to come. And all this. And you ain't going to be able to wear that pretty wedding dress. And you ain't going to be able to go on that cruise for your wedding anniversary. You are. Because behind the scene is what's happening is they want you to have fun with your money they want you to feel free they want you to enjoy it. let me tell you why because after the seven years that God speaks of there'll be seven years of peace then the trials and tribulations will come again it's always the season of sevens okay when when that period comes and you so caught up in the money the thing that's going to take place that's taking place behind the scene is going to begin to show itself the shadow of it is going to come and you're going to be like oops you wasn't aware because you focus on having fun with your money and gloping or prideful or whatever tripping because some of us get booty headed because now we got but it, ain't nobody going to be able to be jealous of nobody it just depends on the vision it depends on your purpose so why be jealous of that? Because we all serve the purpose for one another. So, what's happening behind the scenes? They want your heart to be so in love with what you got and the material things that when that time comes, when the government becomes this new world order and the money market crashes again, when the, when, when the time comes, and the new order comes, which is already here. If you don't know about the um, RFID, the, the chip, people are already getting the chip inserted into them now, into their hands. What they're going to do is allow you to have all this freedom, tax free, you know, going with it, give me tax money. I mean, it started when. Uh, when uh, Carter gave us the uh, 400 and 800 if you're married so you get that automatically if you work or not if you file taxes you get $400 if you're married you ain't both ain't work you still get 800 <laughs> where's that money coming from from your bank account they bought us when we were born that social security number allowed them to you to be bought for a price so they think they own us. But Jesus Christ owns us. That's why he had to come. To redeem us. Back to himself. So he can have order. Over our lives. Amen. So we can become in order with God's laws. And which will should line up with man's law. But some laws are just getting too unbearable. I mean. They want to diminish the population. So that's why we have abortions. That's why they're coming up with chemicals to kill off populations, diseases. And the reason why we have mixed ma uh, same sex marriage, they can't produce after their own kind. So, what way to keep down population is have two women to be together and two men to be together? They can't have no babies. Only way they can have a baby is by insemination, which are hydrogen babies. And if they go through a stimulation with a man and get a man's mm -hmm. run, they have to mix it. 
So we have these hybrid babies and um, you know, you can go adopt. But they're already here. They're already born. So the population with them doesn't make difference. They just got a baby that's already here. A child, that, a person that's already here on the earth. So they can go adopt. But they cannot multiply the earth. And God tells us to multiply the earth. So even population control is being done through same-sex marriages. Abortions. Killing off folks. Police killing folks. We killing folks. Each other. The Holocaust. The slaves. Everything was for popularity control. Population control. Because we got to have enough food. We have to have enough land. Enough house. We don't have enough space. So let's keep it down to like at least the 5,000, 5 million people. I think we had 6 million. So a lot of people, somebody still, some of us got to die. <laughs> Shame. or just Y'all, it's a lot going on behind the scenes while you enjoying your money. While you enjoy your freedom to, to live. Because we want to live. And God said that time is coming. Before we leave here, it's coming that we will have plenty. Joel is speaking of this. But he said, but be careful because while you enjoying that, please understand the signs and times and the stars and the skies and all the things, the earth, what's going on. You better check out Nino. Nanotechnology and all this. You better be looking into this. Study and show that self approved. But he said that. We'll never be ashamed. Enjoy the enjoy enjoy your seven year peace. And what I mean by that is that the money does bring peace. He said money answers all things. And what he means by it, it buys all things. It can't buy love though. But yet it can. It can buy somebody's death. It can buy somebody's life, somebody to live. Money answers all things. And if we get so caught up trying to keep it and harbor it up to his head, he said, what's the reason, what's the purpose of gaining the whole world and lose your soul? He don't want that now. He's trusting each one of us. He's going to pour out his spirit on all flesh. All flesh. Because we're under the dispensation of mercy and grace. Unmerited favor. We didn't earn it. Nobody did. No one's good enough for it. But you know what? God thought we was good enough to die and worth dying till he did. And he allowed the mercy and grace to ascend on us. Now, favor is about to come. This hope that I've been telling you about and telling you is here. It's right. We're on the peak. I'm telling y'all, we right. watch what I tell you. Watch what's going to be happening. Watch the federal. Watch what's going to be happening with your tax money. Watch the economy of money. What? I mean, it's. McDonald's. <laughs> I, I want to have my Burger King. I want to have a Burger King, don't <laughs> Come on, y'all. So, we better be careful because right behind that, just like Pharaoh and them, they got, could get caught up in the money. When it's time, when that trial and tribulation part hurt, hits, and they ask you, are you ready to take the chip and denounce your Lord? Will you take the chip? Because what's going to happen if you don't take that chip? All the money and all the stuff that you have on this earth, they're going to seize it. You can't buy, sell, or look at it. <laughs> can't even look at your money they're going to seize everything if you don't take that chip and if you love that money more than your soul and if you love the money because once you get the chip it becomes you they, they, it, 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 it turns on and they control you it hits a nerve in your body and it turns you, it hit it, it just your DNA it hits your nerve everything is mixed up it hits your brain and you're controlled you're controlled 
And if you're not controlled enough, they'll turn it off to make you suffer because, because when it's time to go buy food, <laughs> you can't go buy food. So they manipulate you and control you with this chip to, 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 to either take it to get to keep your money and keep doing what you're doing, what you love doing, because y'all know we went through hell. For seven, I mean, some, some of us went through hell for more than seven years. So seven years for some of us don't seem a long time. But let me tell you something. Seven years of hell seem a long time to me. If you think from 2008, to, up to 2007, 2008, up to 2015 here. So I think seven years for me of peace to enjoy life with my family and friends is worth it. To be able to do things for the Lord is worth it. To be able to speak out, say what I want to say in the name of Jesus Christ is worth it for seven years. And after seven years, when that seven years is up, it's up, it's up to God. Because like I said, his, his one day is a thousand, you know, and I hit, I hit his thousand could be one day. So you can have one day a good, good day. <laughs> and we all... Go through it. Amen. But you understand. Because God is about season and time. Everything is season and time. And you know, and we try to guess it. So this explosion is coming. And it's gonna be everybody, I'm telling you, when it comes, when this thing happens, we all gonna get along. Everybody gonna like each other for a minute. They'll tell you to go get the chip. Some of them tell you go get the chip now just to protect yourself so you won't have credit cards and all this other stuff. They're giving these, making your, your license RFD now. They're doing a lot of stuff so your identity won't even be taken. So, hey, go ahead and take the chip now so that your assets will be protected. <laughs> Some of you are going to do it because you want your assets taken. You don't, nobody can't rob you and take it. Who can rob anybody? Nobody can be robbed. They can't stick a gun up to you. Well, they can tell you to put your arm up there. <laughs> but government is watching you. They're going to protect you. And they're going to cut it off where it can't be, <laughs> can't come out. And then they got the chip in their arm. Why are they, why are they going to kill us? Some of us, we have more than others. Because God, God's favor is on who he allows favor. Amen. So let's not be jealous. Let's be happy. Let's work with what God gives us. Trust me, whatever your vision and your dream and your needs is, it's going to be enough to do it. And you ain't going to have to rob nobody. I don't, I don't think, we ain't going to have time to kill. We ain't going to have time to do nothing. Everybody going to be just happy. Just, just doing what they can. The malls, you think the malls are packed then when they were talking about us every year? I don't know how the people were, sh they, we were taking our 401k again, not storing up and spending it at the mall. We had, I, everybody had a good Christmas, didn't you? <laughs> In the family. Everybody had a turkey. We were giving away turkey. Come on. But this time, it's going to be awesome. You're going to be able to get the cherries. We're going to be able to help. Because even with Israel getting ready to go through that seven year peace. We're, that's just part of the sign. So. At the same time. I'm giving you hope. Continue what you're doing. Know that God hears as he tells us. To assemble the people. Let's pray and let's fast. Continue to do that. Call out everybody. Sound the trumpet and let them know. Hope is on the way. It is here. Everywhere, ever since God been talking to me about hope. At the beginning of the year. On Christmas actually. He want, I mean I have a book that I'm writing on hope. And. 
it's like all I've been seeing is hope. I saw a movie and it was about hope. So I ask you, just understand and take the warning. Don't get so caught up in the money that you get off focus of what's going on behind the scene that you get so behind the scene that you 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 don't see what's going it, it comes up on you and before you know you react it you know you responded you didn't think about it you just did it but if you are already alert keep your spirit up keep everything in alertness because with anything is asked of you you think before you react you think before you do all right so enjoy your life to come enjoy your peace Love one another, cherish one another, cherish souls, cherish people's lives. If you cherish your life, you will cherish other people's lives. So enjoy what the Lord is about to put upon you. He's giving you not just the finance, but he's pouring out his spirit that you can operate in the gifts of discerning, in the gifts of caring and loving. He's doing that. He's pouring out his spirit that we all shall do well and not be ashamed. And those who don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, please say, accept him as your Lord and Savior. So you can be part of the great remnant he talked about at the end of Joel. Say the great remnant will be seized and sustained. They will be used in the last days because when the trials of tribulation come we call it the great tribulation when it comes they're going to ask you take the chip or we seize your money i'm gonna just let them seize my money because i'm gonna trust god he trusted me i mean i had he took care of me when i was in the family y'all gotta remember he took care of us when we was in the family still like i ate Good. <laughs> okay, good. Okay. So God will continue to feed us. Sometimes we reason why we have to learn how to fast is to control this body. Learn how to because he said everyone control their own members. So we have to learn to meditate to control this member that it doesn't get so hungry that we'll know how. That, that we could control the hunger pains that we're not consumed to do something that we regret later. And then when you take it, you're going to be turning in your family and your friends because it's going to bring you more. You're going to be offered so much more money just to seize your family, just to, t just to, just to catch your family. So now you're under their enslavement that you ain't got time to spend your money because you're too busy looking and lurking. On who got the chip and who don't. And who I can turn in. And so much stuff. This alien stuff. Please. 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 Trust in the Lord. Learn everything. Learn about the Illuminati. The music. Learn what's going on. Listen to them. I'm seeing movies with their sign and signals. That we've been missing y'all. They're giving us movies and their symbols are in there and the symbol are in there and we're missing them. The snake that's biting its tail. These things are in there and in these movies because they're telling you what's going on behind the scenes through the movie. And they're going to use the prophets and your gifts. Be careful prophets. Seek every psychic person you can. Everybody that has the gift, whether they call themselves a psychic or witch, warlock, whatever. Seek after them like never before to bring them to the Lord. So the enemy won't use them and take their soul. They can their soul, their soul is not damned. God has not damned our souls until we die and go to hell and we're judged and then we're damned so we have a chance just like the man on the cross he had a chance 
the other guy, he took that chance. The one that died, damned his soul. His soul got damned when he, because he didn't receive Jesus Christ. And that's when his soul became damned. He wasn't damned because he committed a sin. He just had sin. But if he had not received Jesus Christ as his personal savior, he would have died and been damned through that judgment at that time. Because 40 days, Jesus came back and lived on the earth for 40 days. And they said some of the dead had rose up walking around. Some of the, some, they were saying that they, they, the Bible said that 40 years there was people walking around the earth that were supposed to have been dead. So when Jesus ascended, the people of God ascended as well as that 40 days. So, again, I wish you all well. I wish you all fun. I'm excited for you, for what God is about to do. I'm excited about what he's getting ready to do with our youth. He's pouring out, their, he's pouring out his spirit on our youth, on, on women, on males. And it's a great explosion that's going to come financially and it's going to come spiritually upon us and it's nothing the devil can do but wait his turn and his turn is coming but when it comes okay because even in the midst we're going to have some issues we, you know people still going to die and then you know you, you know you're going to have some issues but i'm you know within the midst but all I'm saying, the pressure of finance is going to be um, the, the finance is going to be better for us because the seven years we're right here on it. The blood moon would be here on um, uh, April the fourth. The blood moon. <sighs> the blood moon. That's the third one. Joel speaks of it. So, be blessed of the Lord again. I am Lisa, Apostle Lisa Davis, prophetess, whatever you apostle, prophet Lisa Davis, at Tree of Life International Harvest Church in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And I pray, Lord, that your people will receive this. I pray, Lord, that they will listen and hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Lord, I hope they take this hope and know that it is near, that this mercy and grace of hope is upon them right now. I thank you, Lord, that even you will ascend your Holy Spirit upon them right now as we pray. You touch them, touch their minds and their bodies to, to, to receive, and their soul and their spirit to receive. Heal the earth and the, and the pain that have come through all of the suffering that has come through just finance or just abandonment. Whatever the loss has come to bring the hurt and pain, just restore it and heal it in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you that they will, will heed and be sensitive in their discerning to know what's coming, in the, even in the midst of being blessed. We thank you, and we give you the glory, and we thank you for the confirmation that will come, not only through me, but through others. And we thank you, in the mighty name of Jesus we pray, amen. Go and be blessed in the name of the Lord our Savior Jesus Christ. Um, you need to talk to me, get greater understanding. You can email me at Apostle Lisa Davis at yahoo.com or you can inbox me on Facebook. Um, I'm under Apostle Lisa G. Or you can simply just really you can call me at 336. 615-1852. Amen. And um on the prayer line there and um and get more information, more understanding if you need to. Um I don't need nobody calling me telling me you wrong. Okay. You can leave that to yourself. That's okay. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Amen. Leave that to yourself. All your bad comments, leave it to yourself. Amen. Because I'm gonna speak with the Lord had told me to speak and I'm going to do what the Lord has told me to do. So <clears throat> your comment is not going to keep me um, from doing it. Um, I'm sorry. So mad or mad. 
So God is going to do what he's going to do. Amen. So I thank you. I hope this bless you. I hope this give you um, some peace. That you can go to sleep resting that seven years. Seven years is upon us. And I thank God for it. God, I thank you. And I give you glory. And I just bless your holy name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Be blessed of the Lord.